fucking kit man, it's obviously match day is the biggest day of the week, but the busiest is the training schedules. Monday, Tuesday is busier because obviously you get a match on the Saturday. Tuesday night is usually the reserve night, so that's catch up usually on a Thursday. And in between that, there's, there's six youth teams that's all to be looked after for as well, so it's, it's, it's just basically washing powder and washing machines all day. Being a Morton fan as well, you know, since I was like four or five has definitely helped and it's a dream to work for something you can have a big passion about. So although I like my moans like most kit men, it's, 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 a, it's a dream job, it really is. I wouldn't swap it for them. Well, if you stay in the pound with him, you can see the skill in the How should Andrew Bryan call his skipper the Vienic and then get the kick shark at the kid? First game as a ball boy was the 24th of November, I think, 1974. Started when I was nine. Um, I don't know, 42 years. Um, I'd been at a game when I was five, my birthday, my mum took me to a game. And a neighbour took me to a couple of other games in the next two or three years. And uh, I remember one of the games I saw the wee guys and I thought, well, no, what do you do? And I was watching them, I thought, I could do that. And then the manager at the time, Eric Sorensen, my dad had knew through business. So I wrote my wee letter and Eric phoned my dad and said, listen, Andrew's wrote to me, wants to be a ball boy. What did I say? And my dad said, look, just tell me, go for it, because he'll be fed up in a couple of weeks anyway. Don't tell him most of the staff bring their bed sheets and that in and their quilts. <laughs> Some of the girls in the office do, but I never told you that. In case uh, Mr. Ray's listening. <laughs> started shaving so I had to stop being a ball boy, I was getting too old for it. Everyone was saying I'm the oldest ball boy in the world so I decided that I've got to hang up my, my balls. <laughs> 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 yeah, whatever, hang up my tracksuit then, hang up my tracksuit. And uh, the kid man at the time, well, he, he could obviously see that I was pretty gutted that I wouldn't get in for none and stuff anymore so he said, listen, if you want to come along on a Saturday morning, help me with the kit. So that, that was it and then, well, I retired, kind of middle 90s and then but at least half at the time, offered me the job full time. And apart from a wee spell in administration, been here ever since, full time. And there will be a few years when Cormac Andrew opened the call of Stoke City on the Pthia League Hassing. I heard through the grapevine that Stoke City were looking for, for somebody. The chairman had threatened a couple of times about part time, um, which is no secret. I mean, in the programme, National Press, if things don't pick up, you need to go part time. So obviously, five or six years ago, I'm beginning to think, you know, what do I do at this age if I go part-time? So I went down to Stoke at the stadium, I'd interview, and they actually called when I was going back up the road to do off me the job. So it came a day or two to think about it, and I thought, champion of the Premiership, you know, and right. aye, definitely, you know. And, uh, the day before I was due to go, the chairman asked me down for a, a quick chat. It was some of the things he'd fixed for me, sorted out for me. It was just blew me away, it was just absolutely incredible and um, a lot to do with the working things, things I'd wanted, you know, to make the club better, which at the time, you no, know, we need to financially look somewhere else. I mean, nothing, a kind of wish list was all given and I never wanted to go, but it was a, it was a massive step as well. And um, so after St. Stokes City, yeah, I would have liked to come down and nearly sign my flat. Um, I had to go back to them and, and Apologise and say, listen, this this has come up, and they were delayed. Agreed with it. I said, it's fine. It's, we understand why, why you want to stay now. And thanks to the chairman, a couple of things were sorted, and still here. Who are they here to get them? Because the system now is under Colin Skippy and Oik the Nahalapa Nudi. Within a month or so, they came back, and I went to Greece with the under 19s last year, which Greece in the end of September was was wasn't to be missed. Uh, we all kitted out with it. The blazers and all the rest of it. So, I, and uh, no, it was it was a very very proud moment, um, it, and it's it's continued now. That next week I'm away with the under 17s, uh, not away. We're staying in Clyde Bank across the water, and one of the games is at Capital actually, which is a bit well, a bit strange for me. But but uh, so I obviously did, did okay. Otherwise they wouldn't ask me back unless there's nobody else wants to do it. <laughs> and I thought I'll just get him in. He's got a free suit. We'll get him along anyway. So no, I'm really proud. Very proud. Ha Andrew Krakere urm vore van of imar fast kan a hall of fame and the Davies a court kirk le game at Tishtenish in Lenting in Low Celtic. They organized a, a induction hall of fame induction dinner um, which can actually fell on the same weekend in November that had been it was my, my 40 years. So the induction thing went on and on it came to the end of the night and Des McQueen was a compare and he said oh, we've got one last inductee and I'm thinking 
yeah, it can't be me. But sure enough, it was. I was just sitting at the table and everyone's looking and clapping and I'm just thinking, nah, this, is, this, is, this is mental, this is no night. So I went up anyway and um, got the wee, wee plaque, wee thing, and they uh, said, have a look at the screen. And there was messages from Alan McCoy, Derek McInnes and Craig Brown. And then at the end of that, which I thought was the end, um, the chairman then, then announced the testimonial game. And by this time, Des said anything to say, and I was like, nah, speechless, can't say a thing. That's my testimonial jersey. Yeah, I'm the only non-playing member of staff. I know, it's, it's unbelievable. There was over a thousand here, which was, was incredible. You know, testimonials are kind of dying out these days. A beautiful sunny night. And uh, no, it was great, it really was. Match day, home game, Queen of the South. Morton legend. <laughs> Meet Alexander. To be fair, I must say this on camera. It's the best bunch of boys I've worked with. I think um, to leave here, I'd be wondering what's happening. And they say that the time age is 65. I've it's only 13 years away. I can't see me not being here in 13 years. I'm really looking at 75, 80. Uh, catch up, get the guys like Danny, he must be 75, 80 at Hamilton, the guys like that. Uh, so if they can do it, <laughs> I can do it. Yeah, 